Let's turn our attention to the Canadian women because some select players are actually in a camp right now in Toronto before they make their way to Australia for the Women's World Cup. And a lot of the players speaking, one of them, of course, being the captain, Christine St. Clair. And this quote emerged uh, yesterday after sitting down with Neil Davidson. And she said, uh, you know, but us as a women's team have flat out told the CSA that we need a deal in place for at least the World Cup and this year before we head down there. Um, I'll just start with you, Ollie. You know, obviously the the women, as we know, signed a short-term deal. Uh, does this does this scream another short-term deal or what is the reality that it, they could actually get a proper CBA done before they leave in what I believe is now like five days they're going to leave? Yeah. No, they're not going to get a CBA done in, in the next uh, few days before they, they leave for, for the World Cup. Um, so it's, it's going to have to be another kind of bridge deal that obviously the women's national team has unfortunately kind of got used to signing over the past year or two, um, both for retroactive payments at times and then now going forwards for... I guess it will be the World Cup in the rest of the year. Um, I, don't, I don't think there was a bit of a scare on, on social media last night about the idea that they might refuse to go to the World Cup um, because of this. That That's not going to happen. Like I, It's firstly a massive tournament, obviously a massive moment for all of their careers. Um, but there's also a big financial incentive to go to the World Cup. There's a big increase in prize money this, this tournament compared to previous years. There's guaranteed payments to every player um, that are pretty considerable. So... This isn't something, at least I don't think so, that is going to, you know, result in again a, a stoppage and, and a big dispute that compromises the team's, um, you know, willingness to to play in the games. What obviously we all want to see is some kind of short-term agreement reached as soon as possible, so that the team can concentrate on the football. And and we've seen this year that that's been an issue. Um, I, I, obviously, it was a massive talking point and took a lot of. Um, time and energy i think during the, the the she believes cup we do not want anything like that a world cup we want them getting on that plane focused on on trying to go as far as they can at this mm -hmm. tournament um and to do that we we obviously need to get this sorted so hopefully they can come to some kind of short-term deal in the next few days and, and and then we can focus on the world cup itself mm -hmm. yeah i had a chance to speak with christine sinclair and she flat out said that they realized during the she believes cup they only have so much energy to give acknowledging that it was uh, a massive drain on them to have those conversations with their federation while trying to focus on a tournament. So they clearly do not want to do that. Um, you know, but Jordan, again, as, as, as a player, you know, obviously you want a deal to get done, but you also have a massive tournament to, to worry about. A tournament where there are expectations of Canada – uh, a lot of the players, you know, saying that even though they are the Olympic champs and they want to do better, they're, they're best showing at a World Cup, by the way, 2003, when they finished in fourth. They know the expectations, though, are still there for them to be strong, even though they still feel many ways they're being disrespected. But how do you as a player kind of shut everything off knowing that you have this big tournament to worry about? I think I think the real answer for me is that you can't. I think <laughs> I think you saw what happened with the She Believes Cup. Um, and the players were thinking about it and people could say, oh, well, this could galvanize the group and this could have us all on the same page. But at the end of the day, it's taking energy away from what you, you came to do. So by no means am I saying this is not if you have rights and you want to fight for them. Cool. I get that. But as a player, male, female, you want to go and focus on what you need to do and you need to get every ounce of your energy on your craft. If you're right back, you need to be thinking about how you're defending and getting forward. Like you can't be thinking about other things um, <clears throat> off the pitch, even though they might be important. So I think with this World Cup, that's what you want to see, right? A deal that has um, the players happy. I know it's not going to be a, a long-term thing, but something that is sufficient. And then it's just focusing on the football because look, a World Cup comes every four years. Like this group is not going to be the same in four years time. I think it's taking care of that moment that you get to play in a World Cup and you get to play for your country and how important that is. This is just not a regular, regular tournament. This is huge. So I know both mm -hmm. things are true, but it, it's really just taking care of the football as well as you go into this tournament. Well, it's, it's also their manager's job to make sure every player is focused. If they're not solely focused on the World Cup right now, I question what exactly is going on in that camp. The question the question's still not being answered. What is standing in the way of them signing a new CBA? Like mm -hmm. the question either hasn't been asked or hasn't been answered. 
which is mind numbing at this point. What we do know is a year ago, last June, a CBA was on the table that would make Canada, the Canadian women's national team, the second highest paid nation in the world for competitive matchups in a deal that would give, if Canada doesn't even get out of the group stage in this World Cup, and the men's team obviously didn't get out of the group stage in the men's World Cup, it would pay them upwards of $140,000 each. Meanwhile, FIFA, what they're offering in terms of plot prize money is $30,000 per player. Seems like CSA's <laughs> kind of gave them a very good offer. What part of that offer has not been addressed? Because the one thing in that Neil Davidson article that kind of caught me, and I think it's the, the, the insinuation that the women's team are in, this, in the same fight right now as the men's national team. Are they? Or are they waiting for the men's national team to okay this potential new CBA in order for them to sign in and move forward with it? Because that seems to be the holdup. I question whether both teams are on the same page. I question how much appetite some of the men's team players actually have to, to, to be in this fight to begin with. So th this is something, questions haven't been answered. There's been so much politicking here. Uh, largely, some of the players on the women's and men's side have got their way. Change has come. They've got certain people out of the Canadian Soccer Association that they blame for a lot of their problems. Now there's new blood. It's going to be time. It's going to take time. Is, mm -hmm. is the same CBA still on the table for them? I haven't heard that it's being pulled off the table. So what is the holdup here? What part of that arrangement, which was released for public consumption, is not adequate right now? And I said this about the comments made by John Herman after the men's game on Monday. The Canadian soccer is not flush with cash. And I'm not just talking about the CSA. I'm talking about the Canadian soccer ecosystem. We're not the United States. We're not these other nations. And the offer, at least from what I'm seeing, just come, someone that's looking at it from a neutral perspective, looks rather generous. And I just wish that we got back a little bit more to that time where playing for your country, representing your country is the true focus and compensation and some of that other stuff comes a little bit afterwards. Hmm. Like it is an honor, a distinct honor to play for your country and current players. I don't care what era it is, whether it's uh, any sport, the current generation is going to make less than the next generation. And yes, you're lining up things for future generations. I understand that, but, but right here in the here and now, the best thing that the women's team can do is put down their noses and get to work. Just solely focus on this once in a lifetime for some of these players opportunity to go out and potentially win a world cup. And I would hate for any of this stuff that's dragging on uh, to, 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 to continue to linger in the background and play any role whatsoever in their preparations. It seems like they're getting everything they ask. I know they're not playing a home game. That's up to the head coach of the team, whether they want to play it or not. They did it. There wasn't time. So here we are today. What part of that deal that's on the table is not mm -hmm. acceptable or not suitable? That question has not been answered. I think we are at the point now where um, an answer probably needs to be given. And the only reason why I say that, because I know I've often preached as well, that things will happen behind closed doors. But the players and Canada soccer, both parties, have brought the public along for the ride. Yes. This has become a very public negotiation. And uh, oftentimes the public was used for public pressure to be put on things, to make things happen, to change. So now I feel you, you can't just bring people along and then say, oh, sorry, not going to share this type of information with you. I think the public deserves to know what is actually holding things up. And we've been saying this for a while now. We always knew this was going to be tricky because this was never a negotiation strictly between the women and the Federation. When you're talking about equal pay, the men are involved too. So now you have three parties. I do understand that the men and women have been communicating behind the scenes. But at some point, someone does need to answer the question, what exactly is holding up this deal since everything has been made public, at least a lot has been made public. So now I think the public deserves to know why isn't a deal signed and what exactly uh, is holding it up. And to your point about prize money, yes, it's gone from 30 million, the 2019 World Cup US to 110 million uh, for the women deservedly so, rightfully so. But when it comes to the deal, what is going on? Because I would rather, to your point, I want to be talking about this team. I want to be talking yes. about the growth of Jordan Heidema and Julia Grosso, you know, how they're, they're you know, 
Grosso is the midfielder of the year for City A. Haidema was brilliant in making that move to NWSL and is finally finding the back of the net. Like, these are the things I want to be talking about. Um, so I just, but I do think the public, because both sides have made it a public fight, do deserve to know what is holding oh. up the deal and why isn't it getting signed? Well, one side more than other. The players, and they've used it to their advantage and full credit to them. They, they have, they have, they have put together this trial to be weighed in the court of public opinion. And not one Canadian fan, not one person in this country doesn't want players to get what they deserve. <laughs> like this isn't about like nitpicking or arguing about money, Every, but, but we, we need to li live in, in a reality where things are very difficult <laughs> in, in Canadian mm -hmm. soccer. And we're not the United States. We're not, in, we're not these countries, but we need to do the best with what we have. And if they're not getting mm -hmm. the best, or the, you know, and, and some of those, some of those complaints were valid and, and they seemingly have been addressed. I haven't heard things otherwise, Andy, perhaps you have. So that's yeah. why I hope that we can move on from this. I think that this is posturing Andy, by the way, like comments like this, they're never going to not go to a, a world cup. Like they're going to the world cup. They're going to play in the world cup. This is setting up potentially some sort of action to take place mm -hmm. after the World Cup. So it sounds like this is more of a preempted strike than anything to do uh, with, with not getting on the plane to Australia. That's and, and, and one last note on this, because I know that over this past weekend as well, there have been some reporters who have just been pontificating about the possibility of Canada soccer declaring bankruptcy in order to, you know, even get out of the, the CSB deal when they talk about money. Remember that when you declare bankruptcy, all contracts become null and void that includes all the sponsorship deals you currently have so are you willing to say goodbye to that, that and renegotiate and would those sponsors come back with the same kind of money with a federation that declared bankruptcy so i know that people are just coming up with ideas and talking about that but that to me is a little ludicrous i, I don't know ollie you're kind of smirking at that one too <laughs> that, that was the first i've heard of it so i haven't heard that fairly yeah. fairly yeah, well, bonkers idea <laughs> I, I will i will say so it was it was in a bruce arthur article that was recently written and then other reporters while we right. were in vegas were all talking about it being a possibility and i said remember all deals go out the window if that happens so the just fight remember, being played in the court thing. of public opinion this yeah is all but that's what posturing. that's what happens that that's what happens when it's in the court of public opinion